What is up, everyone? I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today, off the uh, back of the previous video where we did some testing, I want to make some adjustments to the input channel. And I was thinking about doing them all in one video, but I'm actually going to split them up a little bit because this first one's going to be a bit more, a bit more. <laughs> So I want to keep this one as its own video, and then the other ones can uh, can potentially be grouped together. We'll see. So today I want to talk about microphone preamplifier. Yeah. So what we're going to do for the input channel is before we had the kind of mono input and the balanced input just coming straight in together and then getting amplified and all that. But what we're going to do instead is we're going to assume that the mono input is a line input, meaning it's not an unamplified microphone or instrument. It is a already amplified mic or instrument. And the balanced input will be an unamplified uh, mic or instrument input. And then we'll run the balanced through a uh, preamplifier and the line input through just some filtering, and then we'll have a switch to select between the two. So let's quickly flip over to the schematic and take a look at what the heck I'm talking about. All right, so I started a new schematic because there's a, a few improvements I want to make, and so just modifying the existing schematic uh, wasn't going to make that easy. So I created a new schematic, and this is the input part that I was talking about. So we have the line input, which comes just through some you know, EMI RF filtering and then comes to this switch here, which is where we're going to select between line and microphone or instrument. Here we have the balanced input, which comes through a preamplifier stage and then comes out to uh, the switch. So I want to talk about this preamplifier stage. I want to do some uh, prototyping of it on the breadboard and doing the sound comparison of the microphone again with just this stage. It won't have the volume control uh, that we've had before at, at the moment. So for now, it'll just be uh, whatever the volume of this output is. So really quick, going through this, we have uh, the input connector. Then we have the 48 volt phantom power uh, selection switch. We have the EMI RF filtering that we also have on the line input. That's all pretty standard. And then we get to the actual amplification stage. Now, there's a lot of different ways you can do a microphone preamplifier. Um, some people use transformers. Some people use transistors. Some people use op amps. Originally, I was thinking of going the transistor route, but uh, I fiddled with it a little bit, and there's a lot more, a lot more that you need in terms of uh, theory to work with transistors than with op amps. And for myself, I feel like that's better left to someone who's uh, specialized in working with them. And for uh, yourselves, I think it's more accessible to do to work with op amps than to work with transistors. So I decided to go the route of op amps. And potentially one of the downsides is a higher noise floor so there might be a little bit more noise on the line, but we'll see how it plays out. So with the op amps, what I'm going to do is in this first stage, I'm going to use the lowest noise op amps I can get that still support everything. I know it says 5532s here, but actually I have, uh, I think they're 49720s that are lower noise, but a fair bit more expensive and those are what I'm going to use for this stage um, just to keep down the noise as much as possible and then the rest will be 5532s everywhere um, so for this preamplification stage when I was thinking about it there's kind of two options going in my head the first was doing the combination of the positive and negative uh, rails first and then doing a single amplification stage or two cascaded amplification stages. But I was concerned that the, the 
the all the high value resistors coming into this amplification stage would produce uh, more noise and that noise would then be amplified in the subsequent high gain stages. So what I've decided to do was do these high gain stages first separately, it means there's two op amps required, but then we don't have all of these high value resistors producing noise. Now, my question would be whether the, these 10 Ks uh, are enough to throw it off, but I'm not sure. We'll just see how it sounds. Um, so yeah, I do the gain on each line and then we combine it into a single line up to the switch. Now, there's a few things here. The first is, um, I was actually looking at the data sheet for the 49720s that I have, and they actually have almost this exact configuration as one of their application uh, application notes. So that was pretty cool to see. Means I'm not completely out to lunch. Um, the second thing is we have some capacitors around. I've seen these before in this kind of combination stage, but not on the data sheet for the 49720s. But I decided to leave them in. I think they do a little bit to reduce the uh, some of the noise, and we'll see how it sounds. If it if it if something really sounds weird, then we'll we'll start probing into removing some of these things. But otherwise, uh, I'm going to leave them in because they seem like a good idea. Uh, in terms of gain, uh, each of these has a gain of 101 times. So if you follow this equation where R2 is this one and R1 is this one, you get 101 times. So whatever signal comes in, multiply that voltage by 101 and you get whatever's coming in here. And then this just adds them together. Uh, so I believe that's just a two times gain. I could be wrong, but I think it's just a two times gain. Uh, so really 202 times gain in this whole stage uh, before it comes into the switch. So I think it's gonna be loud enough uh, but we will see. Um, I'm not going to compare it directly with the line input just because there's other factors that come into the volume of what will come into here, like the distance away from the mic, the volume of the source, um, and things like that. So we'll do some testing of this, and, uh, and if it's good, this is what we'll go with. So now I'm going to flip over and we will look at the breadboard. One moment. Alrighty, so here's what we've got. Uh, it's pretty cramped, to be honest, um, but that's okay. I'll move it to a bigger breadboard if it ends up working pretty well. Uh, so we have, you can't see them, but under here we have two resistors in series. These are the um, uh, 6.9K resistors for the 48-volt uh, phantom power that comes in here. So it's kind of crammed in under there. But outside of that, we have the XLR connection coming in. It comes through these two 4.7 uh, microfarad capacitors. And then it goes through our uh, resistors, one to ground, then forward in series, then the capacitor ground. So this is our, our RF EMI filter. And then it connects to the op amp. So I use one side for the negative channel, one side for the positive channel. And so it just has the 10K resistor, the 100 ohm resistor to ground, and then the 4.7K resistor to the next op amp, which is one half of this guy. So these do the 101 times amplification. And then over here, we just have uh, the combining of the signals. So the, you can see these two uh, 4.7 K ohm resistors. This one is the, uh, the feedback to the, the inverting input. And then this is the one to ground. And there are 100 picofarad capacitors that go alongside that. I've also included decoupling capacitors on the power inputs to each of the op amps. Um, I don't know if it makes a difference on a breadboard, but I decided just to play it safe and do that. So I have plus 15 volts on this side, 
I have minus 15 volts on this side and then ground on both sides. I have 48 volts coming in here. I have the switch for the 48 volts on my power supply board. It's right there. You can see the switch here. And then all of the power comes from this power supply that I built uh, a couple weeks back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and plug uh, headphones in to here. Actually, uh, an input to the uh, audio interface, like the testing we did the other day. And we'll record it and see what it sounds like. We'll do the same thing the uh, 10 centimeters away from the audio source. And uh, we can see how that sounds. Uh, I won't do the original audio uh, recording again. You can go back to the previous video and check out how that sounded uh, and do a comparison. But we'll do just the the mic recording and see how that sounds. And, uh, and if it sounds good, then the stage is complete. One second, I'm going to set that up. All right, so there you have it. I think it sounds pretty good. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Uh, I think some of the noise and stuff also comes from the fact that it's on a breadboard and we've got these big loops of wires kind of floating around a little bit. And so they might be causing a little bit of issue, a little bit of extra noise, but I think it's good enough for the time being uh, to move forward with it as a design and so this kind of feels similar in volume to what the line input will be around and then the volume control knob can be used to just balance it out rather than trying to get it up to a volume that you can actually hear so what i'm going to do is i'm going to do a um i'm going to put this onto the main breadboard and then we'll continue on with the other improvements uh, as we go. So I hope you all enjoyed. Uh, until next time, have a good one. Bye.